Sgt. Pepper is hailed a music masterpiece when released in June 1967. Flying high on their success, the Beatles begin to explore different ideas relating to the psychedelic movement. On August 24th, they attend a meditation lecture by Maharishi in London, then the following day go to Wales to visit meditation training. Just two days later on August 27th, they get news that their manager Brian Epstein has died. How have you attributed to we'd like to pay to Mr. Epstein? Well, you know, we don't know what to say. We, we, we called him and he was one of us. So you can't, you know, we can't pay tribute in words. Here I stand, head in hand, turn my face to the wall. Now faced with a void in their business, they begin to experiment with the business side of Beatles, starting with Apple Boutique in December 1967. Back in London, when the Beatles open a shop in Baker Street, everything slows down. Stone's throw from Orchard Street, it's the Apple, the Beatles' new boutique. To mark the opening, the proud owners gave an apple juice party. John and George attend the event where they serve apples and apple juice. The event is a who's who of swinging London and included other musicians and friends such as Scylla Black, Dick Lester, Eric Clapton, Keith Moon and many others. Additionally, in December, they released their psychedelic art film Magical Mystery Tour although now considered a must-see for art students. At the time, the film was not received well by the critics. It is no doubt a highly experimental time for them, both musically and otherwise. On sale will be books, jewelry, paintings, and hippie clothes, as well as furniture. Now, apart from the loony clothes and the uh, kind of hippie flower power stuff, there was supposed to be, you know, all kinds of like different music, which now they'd call world music. You know, we were selling, that's what we we're supposed to do and sell all these books about various things that we were into, various art or spiritual things and incense and, you know, whatever, all that kind of stuff. It, it kind of looked quite good. The building was very nice. The counts and the, the the painting was gorgeous. The fool did that. There was a group of artists, for, uh, basically from Holland, put this beautiful big mural on the wall, and uh, the council got all the knickers in a twist and said, "No, you've got to paint it white again." We said, "Are you kidding? It's beautiful. Everyone loves it." Some residents probably objected. Mm -hmm. So then we were going to project it, paint it white, and project it from the opposite. Thing. You know, we were, it was all full of that. It were good ideas, you know. Some of them you just didn't do, you never got round to them. Great ideas time. Mr. Lennon, can you tell us what it is you're wearing, that button and those... Uh... Well, it's just <coughs> a white button. <laughs> and that's bus prefect. Uh, and that's what? Bus prefect. Bus prefect. In charge of the bus. In January 1968, the Beatles take the existing Apple publishing company on Baker Street and turn it into Apple Core Limited their new business to replace Beatles Limited. The name is a pun on the core of an apple. Paul is inspired by artist René Magritte's 1966 painting Les Jus de Mort. Magritte was a favorite of the time and known for his surrealist visual puns in his art. Uh, oh, you know, an expanding vista. Apple, you know, you sign set it up and then see where it goes. It's like a top, and we set it going and hope for the best. In February 1968, the Beatles, with wives and fellow musicians, travel to India to explore transcendental meditation in the Himalayas with Maharishi. They begin writing the White Album and then come back to begin evolving Apple Court into Apple Electronics, Apple Films and Apple Publishing. Each Beatle uses this opportunity to explore his own interest at the time. Business with enjoyment. Because we're in business, you know. We find ourselves in business. Are you, the directors? Make it... Are you the directors yeah. of this? Yeah. But yeah. like all the profits won't go into our pockets. They'll go to help people, but not like a chap. Ideas on wouldn't it be nice if, you know, because we got screwed in business all the time. 
and uh, you know how you have to go down on your knees. That was the famous one that John said, you know, you don't want people to have to go down on their knees. It's business concerning records, films, and electronics. And as a sideline, whatever it's called, manufacturing or whatever. But we want to set up a system whereby people who just want to make a film about anything don't have to go on their knees in somebody's office, probably yours. On July 31st, 1968, just six months after opening, the Beatles closed the Apple Boutique, giving everything away. We came up with the idea to give it all away and stop fucking about with psychedelic clothes shop. So we gave it all away. Yeah, we just gave it to the people who showed up on the day. And you could have one item each. You, know, you mustn't take two in the spirit of the thing. Well, they cleaned out the shop. Only one free dress for each customer. Only one free dress for each customer. Although an ad that Apple ran in music magazines did not turn out any artists of consideration, they did get some talent referred to them, which they produced and signed. Additionally, in 1968, they released their next film, Yellow Submarine. I produced Doris Troy and I produced a record by Jackie Lomax. Feel fine any time she's around me now. She's around me now, almost all the time. And if I'm well, you can tell she's been with me now. In addition to Jackie Lomax and James Taylor, the Beatles also produced the Ivies, who would later be known as Bad Finger. They also produced Mary Hopkin, who was referred from a British talent show. This was a productive time at Apple. wanted to show up and produce as much as he wanted to produce was welcome to um, trying to get things under our control that was basically what we we're trying to do which a lot of people do now they have their own companies they, they, they take lawyers to meetings and get good deals and things you know it was the start of all of that but it was a pretty haphazard start you know I mean it had a lot of ideas of we could do this and we could do that but when it came down to it really the only thing we could do was write songs and make records and be Beatles successfully. When the Beatles partnership was dissolved in 1975, dissolution of Apple was also considered, but it was decided to keep it operating. Many of the different divisions they had explored in the 60s were halted. Apple evolved over the years and is currently worth millions and include their music catalogue, films, online store and their Beatles Love Las Vegas show. Ownership and control of the company remains with McCartney, Starr and the estates of Lennon and Harrison. <laughs>